Hi everybody, I'm Bryony Downs, speaking for Art Collector Magazine, and today I'm chatting with artist Karen Mills, a descendant of the Balangara people of the Umbulguri and Forest River Aboriginal Reserves in the East Kimberley region of Western Australia. And today we'll be speaking about Karen's painting, Salt Bush Terrain, uh, for the Pool Focus series, which is where we take a close look at just one work from an artist's practice. Uh, today, Karen is in Darwin and I'm in Hobart. Welcome, Karen. Hello, Bryony. Nice thank to meet you. Thank you so much. Great to meet you too. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so with your work, it's often been described as a representation of imagined and remembered landscapes. Can you tell us about the landscape uh, you are imagining and remembering in saltbush terrain? Um, yes, it's pretty much based around the far north of South Australia and the salt bush plains. Mm -hmm. And it comes from a particular memory about five years ago. I was driving back to the Northern Territory after being in Adelaide and it was early morning leaving Woomera. We'd stayed there overnight and just by chance we saw some emus and young emus walking through the landscape and we just stopped and watched them for a few moments and I just, that colour green of the salt bush and the emu colours, they're camouflaged, how well camouflaged they were, it's just stayed in my mind and and when I was thinking about making new work uh, this year and a lot of reflecting time on past memories and places I've visited, uh, the green, the saltbush green colour was just something that I really wanted to work with. And you know, my painting is often a lot about the colours in a landscape and just the feelings of beauty and um, natural uh, wonder at the living landscape. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so you have mentioned that feelings of connection and disconnection go hand in hand when it comes to your experiences and memories of the landscape. What kind of feelings uh, have you experienced when painting a work like Saltbush Terrain and how do these connect back to the materials that you choose to use? I think, I think what I'm painting is a lot of it is just all my life experiences and thoughts and uh, to do with my own identity and sense of self, um, interest in nature and observing the world around me. And I'm thinking all sorts of things. Um, sometimes, a lot of the time, it's really about my relationship and uh, working with the paint mm -hmm. and seeing how the paint transforms the surface. And then also my personal thoughts about my own history as someone who grew up in an adoptive family and was raised as the only child. And yet I have a number of brothers and sisters who I've met in later life and a whole family that I really don't know very much about and have met some in my adult life and just that sense of loss and separation. So yeah, there's a whole lot of uh, feelings within that. And yeah, sometimes it's just, it's really about working with the paint and the process of painting and just that total immersion and looking at the surface yeah. and remembering those landscapes. Yeah, beautiful. Lots of uh, layered memories there. Um, so that brings me to my next question. Um, a distinct visual element in your work is that use of white paint that often obscures parts of the, the painting surface. Can you elaborate on the reasoning behind this technique, like why you use that white paint so much in your work? Yes, um, my, um, I'm always interested in the negative space. Mm -hmm. And as much as I like, I do like patterning and texture and sort of mark making and doing lots of things. But towards the end of my journey of the in, in the painting process, I um, like to focus and draw in on the space around my favourite parts in the composition and highlight them, and then just really focus on the negative space. And I like. I like leaving traces of the of the previous layers, similar to the landscape where, where the landscape's millions of years old mm -hmm. and it's seen so many changes and transformations and just creating a beautiful textural surface. And I basically work with dry pigments, which I make my own paint with a binder. Mm -hmm. And the thing I like about that is the... Um, well, it's really the dry pigments are like really tiny particles suspended 
a liquid and it kind of gives a shimmer and texture, which I enjoy looking at. Yeah, that's lovely. Um, so abstract expressionism uh, is a stylistic influence with your work. I read a really lovely story about your first experience uh, seeing Jackson Pollock's Blue Poles. Uh, and I was wondering what draws you to this way of working and, and how you've kind of incorporated this into saltbush terrain? Pretty much uh, of a love of mark making and just making shapes and marks with my brush. Yes, I, I um, have always been drawn to abstraction and abstract works and I do enjoy looking at all types of art, but yes, I particularly feel that the expression and just the feelings and emotions that an artist can put into a work and it's not related to a particular figure mm -hmm. has, has been, has just been my style that I've uh, been uh, working with for a long time. Um, I don't think I'd ever really, I did in these last few months, I've been practicing with watercolors, which was a more sort of a realistic look at the landscape, but, mm -hmm. But really, no, I still managed to make some marks in there that go back to my true self of mark making and gestures. Yeah, yeah. That connects really lovely back to the, the remembered landscape and those memories and the feelings that are conjured. That's lovely, Karen. Well, thank you so much for sharing those extra insights about saltbush terrain today. Uh, until next time, hope everything goes well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Bryony. Thanks, Karen. Bye for now.